Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. Once again, got lots of topics to dive into in this video. Things are definitely not slowing down. If anything, they may be speeding up. So let's go ahead and get straight into it here. So to begin with, we got this from Chameleon showcasing what looks to be the first attempt to try and implement the new kernel exploit from the flow, which has been dubbed here as the net control exploit, although it is, I guess, officially titled Poopsploit. So this is an attempt from Sistro to load the new kernel exploit from the flow using the existing Blu-ray exploit, which works up to 12.50, which could allow us to jailbreak the PS4 up to 12.50. But this is still just a very early preview of the current progress. There is no full implementation of this yet. As stated here by Chameleon, it's still very green at the early stage, so no promises. Let's hope we can implement it in full and credits to Sistro for initial PS4 implementation with no ETA. No guarantee that Sistro will be successful in fully implementing this exploit, but we can keep our fingers crossed and hope that he is able to actually get this up and running on the PS4 and we'll be able to jailbreak up to 12.50. So that's what's going on there. There's also been another exploit that has been looked at here. So we have a proof of concept for PS5 kernel vulnerability in FSC 2H underscore control syscall so below or equal to 10.40 firmware. So this is actually a different kernel exploit, one that was reported to PlayStation by The Flow and was disclosed in April of this year. Now this came out around the same time as the Lapse kernel exploit. However, with this one, it was just the vulnerability without a full implementation that was released. And most of the developers at the time deemed that it was probably impractical to try and implement this. For the most part, it would be easier just to use the Lapse kernel exploit which worked on PS4 and PS5 and works almost up to the same firmware, not quite, but up to 10.01 on the PS5, whereas this vulnerability should work up to 10.40, which would allow 10.20 firmwares and 10.40 firmwares to be able to jailbreak if it could be implemented. So it was kind of shoved off to the side in favor of the lapse exploit when this first came out. But what we do have now is actually a proof of concept to try and trigger this kernel exploit. So it says here it's a work in progress not useful right now. So kernel exploit for PS5, which is below or equal to 10.40 via the stack use after free in FSC 2H underscore control syscall. So it is just a demonstration. You can see the status here. Four thread race conditions are implemented. Stack use after free is achieved. RIP control at predictable offset. But the full ROP chain for privilege escalation has not been implemented. And for the people wondering if there's going to be a release, it says this is just a demonstrator and I don't want to get sued. So perhaps uh, this person will not actually take this further, but another developer might take this code and push it further into an actual working kernel exploit, hopefully. So that would be the idea. But for now, this is just a proof of concept uh, demonstrating the vulnerability itself. So you can run the payload using the YouTube exploit. All you have to do is download the JS file, no control JS, and then send it with a payload injector like Netcat GUI when you have the YouTube application running with the exploit for Y2 jailbreak. And then when you send it, it will trigger the exploit as you can see here. So that is all it does at the moment. It doesn't really go any further. So that's what's going on there. We also got the release of the YouTube jailbreak auto loader for the PS5. And this of course allows you to automate the payload loader for YouTube jailbreak, which basically means that you can just launch the YouTube application and it will run the full chain exploit, running the kernel exploit and then the bin loader and then any payloads that you want it to run like ETA hen or K stuff. It will just run all of that for you automatically and then close the YouTube application once it's done. So it turns it into a one click jailbreak. Just launch the YouTube application, let it run through and by the end of it, you should have your console jailbroken with ETA hen or K stuff running without having to send any payloads over the network, without even requiring a network connection, because you can turn off the internet completely with this and it runs all of the payloads locally. So that is very handy. I do have a backup file created for it that you can restore onto the console to get it set up with the latest release of ETA hen, so it will automatically load it. You can also copy the PS5 autoloader folder to the root of a USB drive and then add whatever payload you want it to load into that folder and then edit the autostart.txt file and change the payloads that it normally loads to the payload that you want it to load. And then when you plug in that USB drive and load the YouTube application, it will choose to load that payload off the USB. You can also upload that folder to the data folder on the hard drive so it can just load the version from the internal storage instead of off a USB drive. So that makes the YouTube jailbreak much more convenient to use. 
but there's also been an update to the main project for the YouTube jailbreak as well. So this version is the same as version 1.2.0, except the difference here is that it now adds an embedded YouTube update blocker for the 1.2.1 backup. So if you download the backup file and restore it onto the PS5, you will have that update blocker automatically included. If you're updating the exploit because you already have an older version of the YouTube exploit installed or using a previous jailbreak to switch to the YouTube jailbreak, then you'll need to install it manually. So you can download the download 0.zip file. However, it's not just a case of copying the download 0.dat file where you connect on FTP to your PS5 and then you go into the user download folder and then the title ID of the YouTube application PPSA 01650 and then in there you replace the download 0.dat file with the one from the exploit and that will get the exploit installed but then to install the update blocker then go into system data priv mms and you'll find all of your database files in there and you want to extract the appinfo.db file and extract that to the same folder as your download zero folder for the exploit, which contains the app info editor Python file. So extract it into the same location as that Python file and then right click in that folder, open in terminal and then run that script by typing in Python space app info underscore editor dot py. And that will go ahead and edit that file and it will create a backup of your original in case it causes any database corruption. So the original file will still be there, but you'll now have the edited one. So you want to take the new edited version and copy that over to your PS5 with FTP and update the file. And that's how you can install it manually to get the update blocker applied. And that should prevent the YouTube application from updating. And this is primarily to fix the issue that a lot of people were running into when running the YouTube jailbreak, which is this download and update file message appearing, which soft locks the YouTube application, preventing it from going into the application to run the exploit. So that's the updates to the YouTube jailbreak, but we're not done. We also have an update to the YARP exploit, the yet another RenPy PlayStation exploit. So this particular version again uses the games A Year of Springs PS4 and Arcade Spirits, the new challengers, as a game that can load an exploit via a save file that executes Python script that can then be used as an entry point to jailbreak the console. And we now have the full implementation now of the LAPS kernel exploit. So we have the LAPS exploit and the bin loader that can allow it to execute payloads. So you can now effectively jailbreak your PS4 using this exploit. Now, again, it's only up to 12.02 still, just like the Blu-ray exploit because it's using the LAPS kernel exploit. But if it can be chained with any of the future exploits, we could also use it to jailbreak higher firmwares eventually. But that is the general idea. So the version on the release is 3.1.0. So you need that version of the save file. So you can go ahead and download, I would say, the save.zip file here to your computer. And then you can use the updater that's included in the code if you go to the code and download it as a zip. And then all you have to do is run the application. If you already have the save file set up, you can just run the previous version. Now you can update to the latest version by using the updater if you have a previous version installed. All you have to do is get the exploit loaded and then use Netcat GUI or some payload injector to inject the update payload. And when you inject that payload, it then asks you to send the save.zip file, which you can download from the repo. And you just send that using Netcat GUI on the same port. And that will extract that save file and update the save data with the latest version of the exploit. And once that's done, you can press X to close the application and then just launch the game again. And when you load the save file, it will now be the updated version from the repo that is loaded. Now, if you want to know how to install the save initially, I did cover that in a previous video, which I'll leave in the description. You can use the Apollo save tool to extract the decrypted save data from the original save and replace it. Or you can use the Discord save bots, like the save bots on the HTOS Discord server. But you can see now that we're running it, we have the updated version 3.1.0. So it can now load the kernel exploit. So all I need to do is drag in the laps.python file and send that to the console. And that will start running the kernel exploit. It does take a while for it to actually execute this. It is quite slow compared to some of the other exploits when loading the laps kernel exploit right now. So you do have to give it some time for it to fully complete the process. But as you can see here, once it is done, it then says it's awaiting a connection. So you can then send the bin loader as a follow-up payload send that with netcat and there we go that's now running and now that the bin loader is running you can then send any additional payloads that you want to run like the hen payload the homebrew enabler or gold hen and then you have the console properly jailbroken with the debug settings the ability to install package files 
and run your fake packages. So yeah, you can literally jailbreak your console now using this game. So at least for now, we can say goodbye to the Lua exploit and use this game instead, which is a much more readily available game, not one that's only available in Japan. So that is fantastic. But again, it only works up to 12.02 on the PS4 and you can already jailbreak up to that firmware with the Blu-ray disc. But if this can be chained with any of the future kernel exploits that come out, it would be very useful. And this can also work on the PS5, although the lapse kernel exploit and bin loader are for PS4, I believe at the moment. They're not, they're not fully functional on PS5 yet, but the exploit itself, the user land exploit does also work on the PS5. So yeah, some fantastic updates to that exploit as well. And we also have the Netflix in Hack project, which is nearing completion. So this one is also getting pretty far. If we go to the payload section, we can see we now have the lapse payloads implemented for the kernel exploit. In this case, it has to be done in stages. I believe there's some kind of size limit. So you have to load the first one, the prepare one payload first, then prepare two, and then the third one to actually run it. And it can get to the point of actually running the debug settings on the console if you execute it in the correct order. And we also have more image files for the M.2 drives. Before it was only two terabytes and 256 gigs, but now it also supports one terabyte NVMe drives and four terabytes and also 500 gigabyte drives, which is sort of the main size range that you would typically expect from your M.2 drives. And this is so that you can actually install the Netflix application, the correct version, without needing to restore a backup file, which resets your console. By restoring one of these NVMe images that has the Netflix app already installed to your NVMe drive of the same size, which you can then connect into your PS5, and you'll be able to access that version of the Netflix application from there or copy it to your internal storage, allowing you to just add the proxy settings to be able to then use the Netflix application to jailbreak the console. That's one big benefit that the Netflix and Hack project has for loading the jailbreak which you cannot do at the moment with the Y2JB, the YouTube jailbreak. With that one, you have to restore a backup if you don't have a previous jailbreak already. We also have a quick update to the app dumper for the PS5 for dumping your PS5 games. It's now on 1.05b by Echo Stretch, which now has the ability to auto backport the games and also automatically fake sign the ELF files as well, which basically allows you to turn the game into a playable game backup that could then be immediately loaded through something like items flow or the K stuff dump runner. So that is all now built into the payload, whereas previously you'd have to do all that stuff on the computer after you dumped the game. So it basically handles everything for you now, which is fantastic. And also IdleSauce has been updating the self decryptor to improve it so that more games can be properly decrypted, hopefully allowing more games to work and other games that had certain problems can now work better and run better than they were previously when decrypted using the updated decryptor from IdleSauce. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. Still lots of stuff to come, but uh, I don't want to have this video run too long. So that'll do it for this update. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.